Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you want to hunt fish the skinniest of waters, we'll be taking a look at the Ancona Advent 17, a flats boat with an overall length of 16 feet 10 inches, a beam of 5 feet 8 inches, and max horsepower rating of 50. Standout features of the Ancona Advent 17. A no-slap hull gives anglers the ability to get in extremely shallow water without spooking their target. Gunnel Rod Storage provides a safe location to store rods without taking up valuable deck space. Easy polling makes it a breeze to accurately stock game fish in the shallowest of waters. For those who enjoy a day relaxing at the sandbar as much as they love fishing, we'll be looking at the Glassstream 228 TE, a bay boat with an overall length of 22 feet 10 inches, a beam of 8 feet, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Glassstream 228 TE. Easy console access with a large front opening door simplifies entry and provides ample storage space. Large casting decks provide fishermen with the ability to move about more freely while trying to cast the perfect spot. Multiple live wells give bait an adequate amount of space to survive a hardcore day of fishing. If your fishing style demands an offshore battle wagon with exceptional range, we'll be taking a look at the CV290B, a center console with an overall length of 29 feet 6 inches, a beam of 9 feet, and max horsepower rating of 800. Standout features on the CV290B. A seaworthy design makes for a soft and dry ride, giving those on board peace of mind when venturing into unpredictable conditions. Large console access provides boaters with an easy access to the console for storage or head and without compromising rod storage on the side. An exceptional range gives boaters the ability to make long runs offshore and take extended trips to remote destinations. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm Captain Rick Riles. And I'm Florida Sportsman Boating Editor, George Labonte. We got a very cool lineup for everybody today. We're gonna start out with the Ancona Advent 17, go to a Glassstream 228 TE, and finally the CV 290B. I wanna start out by talking about this Ancona. Now, the Ancona Advent 17, is a really cool little boat. You know, the guys over there at Ancona, they had an idea to take Micro Skiff Manners and build it into a little bit bigger package. Now, a Micro Skiff boat typically is a two-man boat. It's gonna be really tippy. They made this boat Micro Skiff pullable and Micro Skiff shallow water friendly, but they added enough room to put a third passenger and made it way more stable. Well, you said it when you said Manners. That boat had excellent manners. You don't often think about describing a boat that way. But I gotta tell you what, that little Glass Dream 228 TE, you know who she is? Who's that? She's the hot little sister to that 262 TE. You got that right. Mind your manners, by the way. That boat, you know, they fit all of the capacities under the deck that they have in the 260 into that little 22-foot boat and just brought it into a smaller package that's much more inshore friendly. You know, last but not least, again, the CV290B. They never disappoint us either. I mean, this boat, you remember, that was the boat that we had out on that day. It was six foot seas out there and we we're running the boat in the inlet. That's the boat we launched completely out of the water, engines and everything, and the whole camera boat stopped and they were waiting for the big crash. What happened? Oh, she landed like you're sitting down on your sofa. It was ideal. All three boats do something totally different today. That's the shows I really love when we get into that. So let's get to them. When we come back, hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat built for attacking the flats, the Ancona Advent 17. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they take a closer look at the Ancona Advent 17. 
Representing the flats boat category, the Ancona Advent 17 has an overall length of 16 feet 10 inches, a beam of 5 feet 8 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 50. Designed to track quietly through skinny water, she has a draft of 6 inches, a dry weight of 350 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 11 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Well, we've been reading about this boat for months. We're finally looking at the Ancona 17-foot Advent. What a boat. What a boat is right. And it almost feels to me, George, like the road less traveled. We, we go through so many boats every day that do so many things. And here we put the cushions on as a family boat. We take it off. The, this boat is a rifle shot. This boat does what it does. And when you've got a 17-foot boat like this one is, man, every inch is important. And they have really worked hard on this hull. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, what is this boat actually designed to do? You know, there's not that much to a technical pulling skiff. You want a boat that's shallow draft. You want a boat that's quiet. And when I say quiet, I mean it'll sit and move in the water quietly. All right, think about that. If you're trying to catch a fish in a foot of water, that fish is going to be aware of your presence. It's hard to sneak up on a fish in a foot of water and him not know about you. A quiet boat will get you closer and get you within casting range before they're aware of your presence, okay? This boat is a quiet boat. George, years ago when redfish tournaments were first starting out, I saw guys with pieces of carpet hung off their boat because they said they had to protect from the hull slap. I thought it was the stupidest thing I'd ever heard. It's not, okay? But fish definitely hear a wave hitting the side of your boat. They do. Hence the reason why they built this boat the way they built it. A 16 foot, 10 inch boat that's 5'8 wide. I mean, that's a lot of room to have a boat that still goes in that six inch uh, depth, you know? And this boat really does it. I mean, so it wasn't just making another skiff for these guys. It was making a skiff that was bigger and roomier and more stable. This is a boat that you can move around on, two adults can. And you know, let's talk a little bit about features in the boat. You know, there's not much to look at on a technical skiff like this. You're gonna obviously have some storage and we've got a big box up there. The box is gonna take care of anchor line if you need it and gear. The fuel tank is under where you're sitting, obviously. And, you know, we've got two hatches right here. They're both, they're offset right here. These two hatches, one of them is a live well, okay? And it's plumbed as a live well. It's about a 10 gallon well. It looks bigger, but it's 10 gallons. And the matching one here for another storage box, which can be plumbed as a second live well if you want it. That's how I'd have it if it was my boat. But you've got that and your console. I mean, basically, you know, it's a Spartan boat. I mean, that's what they're made for, and this is what we've got. Mel also did something I thought was fascinating. When he did this cap, it's almost impossible to step off of this cap onto one of your rods when they're in the racks. Oh, yeah. Which I've seen done. We've Let's... all done it. We've all broken rods. You can't do it because of where the reels are, and it's very, very well thought out. They always do a good job. You've got rod holders on both sides that'll fit a fly rod, and they're staggered, so you can stack the rods up and not have the reels piling up on top of one another. That's very clever as well. You know, another thing that really jumped out at me when I got up here, too, I like a full width polling platform. You know, I mean, a big guy, if I'm not a great big guy, but you know, somebody my age, my size, I mean, I don't want to stand on a tennis racket to push the boat around. This thing is really full width and it's very stable. I mean, it's, it's a comfortable place to push the boat from. George, one of the things I love about doing top of the line boats, all right, which I put this one in micro skiffs right there. As do I. Those hatches we both like. We think they're cool or offset like that. You realize you can reach those from on your trailer, right? I mean, that's just a little bitty thing that you'll really appreciate as an owner. That's a good point. Oh, let me pull a plug on that live well. Just lean over and do it. You couldn't do it if they were set up like most live wells are. Cool idea. If what a boat does and how it performs and how it's built is what is more important to you than how much it costs, you need to check out the Ancona Advent 17. It is a rifle shot into shallow water. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles board a boat designed equally for serious fishing and relaxing, the Glassstream 228TE. This segment brought to you by Engel, the best performance coolers on the market. Wake up early on your days off. Go on an adventure. Get out on the water. Here at Engel, we live for these days. We think you should spend more time in nature let us help you enjoy it. For those that care about quality, who want to get out into the world with a confidence that their gear is going to stand up to the day's challenges, 
Ingle Coolers are built for you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles, as they discuss easy maintenance options on the all-new Yamaha 425 XTO in this week's power segment. George, Yamaha has been promising us a new offshore Predator 425 XTO, unlike any V8 we've ever seen before. Yeah, you know what? Think about what's happening in boating these days, Rick. I mean, we're seeing bigger and bigger center consoles. A great big center console needs a lot of motor to push it, and I believe this thing was tooled up just for that purpose. We needed new technology for a new power plant and just started at the prop. It starts right here. The exhaust porting on this motor, below 2,500 RPMs, they send all the gas out above the anti-ventilation plate. That provides a really clean place for the water to sit around the prop. When you're going backwards in reverse or maneuvering in close quarters, you're throwing really dense, clean water at those props much more maneuverability, 300% better than the 350. And boy, you mentioned the props. We've never seen props like the size this thing can throw. And the old technology could have never turned those props for a long period of time. They required new gears, bigger, stronger gears. The XTO 425 has got them. Now, let's check out the Glass Street 228 TE. Representing the 17 to 24 foot class in the Baybo category, the Glass Stream 228 TE has an overall length of 22 feet 10 inches a beam of eight feet, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Laid out for fishing fun and relaxing at the sandbar with the family, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 22 degrees, a dry weight of 3,050 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 75 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. We've seen several glass streams over the last few years, Rick, and last year we saw the 260 TE Tournament Edition. That actually appealed to me the most. I mean, a boat that you could fish inshore and offshore, that boat was one of the boats I had the most fun on last year. But meet the little sister to the 260, their 228 TE. I say little sister because it's laid out exactly like the 260 was. I mean, the same deck configuration. It looks like the 260, just in a smaller package. This boat is gonna sneak around a little better in the quiet water. You know, it's a little bit smaller footprint, so you know it's a little more user-friendly on the inside. You can still go offshore in this boat, no problem. George, we had the boat offshore today. We we're running the beach, catching bonitas. We had a ball. I mean, it was just a lot of fun. And you know what? For two or three people, it's ideal on a calm day. This is a single step bottom. That step hull, I mean, the glass stream step hull, performance-wise, they're really, really, I mean, they do what they're supposed to do, okay? This boat, I'm sure, would eat up any bay chop you can throw at it. You know, we talk about the similarities in the configuration. Let's take a look at this boat and break it down. Why don't we start back here? George, back here is where it becomes kind of your standard bay boat, okay? This is pretty much lined up to fish from, although it does have a slip-in backrest and a removable seat here. Plenty of room for a couple of guys to get up on top of this to fish. And you've got the attributes of a bay boat too back here in the nature. You got a jack plate, you got a power pole, but space under the deck, you know, on this boat here, you've got a 35 gallon live well in the center right there. You've got a couple of insulated boxes here. Access to your bilge is in the center deck. You know, you're a little bit offshore right here, but this is all backwater fishing right here. You're absolutely right. And an, a, the most comfortable place to ride on a boat is we know once you drop in the, uh, the seat cushion and the backrest. Something else that you might want to do when you go to a place like this on the sandbar, you put that power pole down. You know, when you get it set up, you might want to just go chill out, not take a walk and go fishing. And you mentioned there's cushions that cover the whole back deck here, removable, and a removable backrest. You've got a lounge little seating kind of set up right here, which is nice also. Let's get some shade here. Take a look at the middle of the boat. You know what? It's only early June here, and one thing, a feature on a boat that's never lost on me is the shade, shade, shade. You're probably tired of hearing me say it. Now, you know, you think of bay boats, a bay kind of boat, you don't always think about having one with a T-top. This is a center console style that you're gonna find on an offshore boat, and the reason why most people don't want that on a bay boat is because it takes up a lot of room in the boat. On this boat, it really doesn't. You've got a huge area up there and a plenty big enough area back here to fish, and when you want to get out of the sun, here it is right here, offshore center console. The console is plenty sporty and plenty easy to work, but you can't see all the best parts about it up here. Step up front of the console because I want to show you my favorite part of this boat's console. All right, show me your favorite part of the console. George, 
How much stuff is lost in consoles in the United States of America with little tiny side door openings that you never find your stuff again? A console needs to open right here. You're right. I, this isn't even a hatch to get inside. This is like the hatch on a station wagon pulling up the back of it. And you've got full access to a bunch of storage inside of there. Let's talk about this casting surface for a minute, okay? You thought that was, you know, the average medium-sized casting surface. On the back, you've got a deck for two people to fish on. Just a little bit more real estate up here. Now, we've got the cushions in. We've been sitting around here on the sandbar getting ready to eat some lunch. Take those cushions out, fiberglass, good grip on the deck. And underneath that, again, you've got more storage and an additional live well here. Now we got a 35-gallon well back there, 30-gallon well up here, plenty for a boat this size. The 228TE, which of course stands for Tournament Edition, Glass Stream, is a boat that if you want to have a lot of fun with your family on weekends, you're going to want to check out. When we come back, hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles examine an extremely offshore-capable boat that is still easily trailerable, the CV290B. This segment brought to you by Infinity by Harmon. It's all about the music. Hey Dad, can we do that again tomorrow? Don't forget your sunscreen. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Rick Riles and George Labonte as they check out the CV290B. Representing the 27 to 30 foot class in the center console category, the CV290B has an overall length of 29 feet 6 inches, a beam of 9 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 800. Engineered to journey offshore in the roughest conditions, she has a draft of 20 inches, a dead rise of 25 degrees, a dry weight of 5,900 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 251 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, I've known for years what a big fan of CV you are. We didn't have to spend much time on this 290B this morning to find out why. Gigantic storage availability, gigantic live well capacity, all the features of a bigger boat than this, but more importantly, it's in a smaller package that is easily trailerable. One word, clean. Single layer deck, easy to clean back at the ramp, no sharp edges. Golly, this thing's laid out sweet. Rick, I want to tell you a little bit about how this boat handled in the ocean today, okay? It was a good, honest, four to five foot at about five seconds, real close together. You know, you're gonna see it in the tape. We got this boat completely out of the water, all but the props. I mean, we were airborne in this boat and the thing landed like we were landing on a big pillow. Not a pound, we could not make a pound. Cap, let me tell you, I could see that so well from the camera boat. I had a better view of that than you did. You're exactly right. Rick, there's a reason why this configuration, the open 360 fishability of a center console has become so popular over the years, and that's fishability. You know, most of the action on a boat like this really takes place up here on the bow, and look at all the features that we've got to look at here. The gunnel height is perfect here. The combing bolster hits me right in the right place. You can reach the water with a gaff. You know, you're fishing up here. I mean, everything's right here within arm's reach. But as you move your way back to the console, they did that so well. Yeah, there's so many things to love about this console, starting with this right here. You know, nobody builds a bigger console inside than CV, and this forward entry right there, that is a very big space. I mean, plenty big enough to put an electric head down in there. But more importantly, on a serious fishing boat, you've got room to store a ton of gear there. And, you know, your mother panel, all your stuff, you open up access to the back of the console from the inside the helm, all your wiring up inside there. Everything is really easily reachable from this point right here. But, I mean, that is a large space to work within. Well, let's talk about a serious fishing boat for a minute. A serious fishing boat is going to open from the front because you're going to want rods down each side. You can never take too many rods. You can never have too many rod holders on a boat. Hey, let's move back here. There's a bunch of stuff going on at the helm I want to talk about, too. George, almost everywhere I look on this boat, the lines, everything seems so clean. When you come back here, it sure looks that way to me. It is super clean, Rick, you know, and also very functional. One of the things I've always really enjoyed about CVs, too, is that 
you know, there's plenty of room to get around in this boat, but it seems like there's a lot to get behind in this console right here. You know, and everything you need is here. Two big MFDs on there, all your instrumentation. You know, look at, we're talking about storage and space. 22 places to put a rod just around the console here between this top alongside both of these and on this tackle station right here. Let's take a walk back into the cockpit and look at the rest of the stuff back here. Okay, Rick, have a seat, old buddy. Uh, in the cockpit, when you fish in a boat like this, if you're fishing downhill with the kite up in the bow, you've got room to fish back here and plenty of room. And there's a lot of stuff going on below the deck. Let's talk about it for a minute. Boy, you got so much storage, you can put another 60-gallon well right here, can't you? Yeah, you absolutely can. This boat comes standard with a 60-gallon live well in the transom. That's on every boat. There's a 60-gallon insulated box right here, a 240-quart box that can be converted to a live well. Well, one of the benefits of this boat, you were just showing me all the different layouts. For example, I love this tackle locker back here all the space you need to put a bunch of offshore tackle there in that cooler. You know, storage everywhere on this boat doesn't stop here. You've got two boxes right here where you can put stuff away as well. Two 300s, that's a 60 mile an hour boat that gets 1.7 miles to the gallon we we're getting today. And 251 gallons of fuel capacity. This boat will go a long way. You've got a lot of range to do it on and two motors push it great. It's just a more manageable package without giving up this fish ability or the sea keeping ability of the great CV34 that we both love. Listen, if you're looking for a big offshore boat in a smaller package and something that's ready to go take on seas like we face today and catch anything you can imagine, the CV290B might be the boat for you. George, I'm always really leery of micro skiffs. That Ancona was comfortable. You could comfortably fish three people in that boat with no problem. You definitely can. They hit the mark on all counts. The boat was super stable, ran really shallow, pulled like a dream. What more can you ask for? How about that glass stream? At 70 miles an hour, that's the hot little sister that not many people are going to be able to catch. It's one word for that boat. It's fun, but that CV290B, what a beast. A monstrous center console into a manageable package. It's trailerable, gotta love it. If you want any more information about the boats you've seen this week or any boat you see on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, go to floridasportsman.com. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina.